Tomorrow Never Knows by Daystar. The hospital felt like an entirely different place at night. During the day, doctors and nurses hustled back and forth through the halls, stopping every so often to exchange information on different patients. At night, however, the only noise that came from the hallway was the occasional hoofsteps of a doctor or nurse making their nightly rounds. Dragging a hoof in front of her mouth, Nurse Red Hart let out a huge yawn, followed by a grunt. He stared back at the book, lying at, on a desk in front of her, and flicked a page with her hoof. Not even that coffee can keep me awake. She sighed to herself, and resumed her lecture on microbiology. Her desk could barely allow the book to open, due to the amount of patient files and hospital documents and all sorts of office accessories that are needed to be there. Normally, she would have more space, but the number of ill patients had increased ever since winter came. Holding the mug with her hoof, Red Heart took a sip of the bitter coffee, cringing. Should have added more sugar, she said, placing the mug back on the desk. The long corridor had several doors, which led to different departments, such as neurology or ophthalmology. Benches were set on the middle, so ponies could sit and wait their turn. The bottom of the corridor was occupied by Red Heart's and a couple of nurses' desk. The only light was the dim moonlight that trickled through the thin, teal curtains of the very few corridor windows. For the hospital, it was a peaceful night. As relaxed as the night could be, there was some pony who didn't seem to agree. Nurse Red Heart was just as stressed as she would be at noon, with dozens of ponies chatting and walking around the corridor, and the little foals running and yelling aloud, even if it was against hospital rules. No, that night was not peaceful for Nurse Red Heart. Her Red Cross cutie mark could tell any pony that she was a nurse, and that she had been content with being one. But that was not the case. She indeed loved to be a nurse, but she couldn't stand it anymore. Red Heart had decided that this would be her very last week in the hospital before signing her resignation letter. It wasn't a sudden decision, though. She had been planning the whole thing a couple of months now, and now six days had passed, and it was Nurse Red Heart's last night at the hospital. The next morning was going to be the end of a chapter in her life, a long and memorable one. As soon as she flicked her book one page, a voice came from her desk radio. Nurse Red Heart, please report to room 9. Gasping, Red Heart jumped to her seat and stared at the radio. The sudden voice startled her, but the message was clear. Sighing, she stood up from her seat and trotted through the corridor, taking a left turn at the exit and then a right turn at the staircase. Even if the hospital was huge, she knew it like the back of her hoof. Cantering through the marble halls, Red Heart passed the rooms 1 through 8 and arrived at her destination. Finally, she stepped inside the small room, which was only illuminated by a simple lamp hanging from the ceiling. She noticed a mint-colored unicorn on a bed, wearing nothing but a blue hospital shirt gazing at her. However, Red Heart did not return the stare. Instead, she shifted her gaze to the yellow-coated unicorn, standing next to the patient's bed. You called, doctor? Levitating fowls with its magic, the doctor turned and looked at the nurse. Ah, uh, nurse Red Heart. He placed the files atop the nightstand, which only had a lamp, and trotted towards the nurse. I'd like you to watch over this patient tonight. She has just arrived a few hours ago. He pointed his hoof at the mare and the files he was carrying in a few moments ago. Compared with the others, the room was rather small. It was suited for just one patient, with a bed near the corner of the room and a defibrillator on the other side, a simple wooden chair leaning against the other corner. The white walls and the grey floor gave an eerie environment, considering the room had no in windows. Blinking, Nurse Redheart looked back at the mare, who was still gazing at her, simply lying there, with nothing but a cable attached to her foreleg to an EKG and an intravenous bag on the other side of the bed, attached to her other leg. She had no bandages or signs that she had broken something. Anyone could say she even seemed to be healthy and ready to go. Uh, alright. Nurse Redheart returned her stare to the doctor. At least she was going to have something to do tonight instead of reading a boring book all alone. What's the matter with her? She had a heart attack some hours ago. We were lucky enough to that we brought her here in time. Though a little later and she might have not made it. 
the doctor trotted past Redheart, making his way to the door. <clears throat> we'll be monitoring her for the night, but we need a nurse to be around, just in case that something unexpected happens. We've got other nurses taking care of other patients, so you are the only one available. Yes, I understand. Redheart responded, her words emanating anything but enthusiasm. She only wished for noon to arrive soon, so she could step outside that hospital and never come back. She turned and trotted towards the bed, to at least greet the ill one she was going to take care of for the one last time. The unicorn still stared at Redheart, like if she had something stuck on her face. Thank you, Nurse Redheart. The doctor nodded and stepped outside the room. However, Nurse Redheart didn't reply back. Now, if you excuse me, I've got to check some reports on the ER. He waited a few seconds for an answer that never came. Rolling his eyes, he closed the door room and left without a word. Redheart waited for the hoofsteps in the hallway to fade and sighed. She looked at the unicorn and noticed that she had a weak smile on her face. Ignoring it, Redheart moved in front of Nightstand and opened the folder, reading its contents. The name Lyra Heartstrings was displayed at the top of the first page. The unicorn tilted her head, confused about the nurse's silent treatment. Wishing to break the ice, she decided to go forth to talk. Hi! Nurse Redheart turned her head and looked at the unicorn with a blank expression on her face. Hello, she said. She shifted her gaze back at the documents. The unicorn blinked. She didn't expect such a cold and quick answer. Regardless, she didn't want the conversation to die quickly. I'm Lyra Heartstrings, she stated, offering the nurse a grin. This time, she hoped for a warmer answer. Nurse Redheart rolled her eyes. So the files weren't lying, huh? She didn't bother to turn her head this time. She flicked through the files, carefully reading whatever was on them. The usual stuff, written by both paramedics and doctors. It seems like you had a heart attack. Girl, you're lucky you live relatively close to the hospital. She flicked through the files, ignoring the grimace on Lyra's face. Jeez, what's with the attitude, nurse? Is this how you treat all your patients? Lyra fumed, frowning. Red Heart's ear twitched, but no response came from her. She kept looking at the documents, as if she had n heard nothing. Giving up, Lara sighed. <sighs> Fine. Don't talk to me then. I thought nurses were kind and sweet. Seems like I was wrong. With a hoof, Red Heart closed the files and glared at Lyra. Do you really think that all nurses had to be kind and loving? Do you have any idea of what it is like to be a nurse? She almost shouted the last question. Lyra had no words in her mouth to answer back, and Red Heart's sudden outburst was enough to shock her. She couldn't do anything but stare at the nurse's blue eyes. A few seconds of silence passed before Nurse Redheart grunted and turned away, wondering if she had said something offensive. Lyra gulped. Sorry, whatever I said. I. Never mind this, alright? Redheart turned back and trotted away from Lyra. You need to rest, so please don't waste your breath talking to me. Go to sleep or something. Offended, Lyra frowned. Not even her apology could form a smile on Nurse Redheart's cold face. Fine, she grumbled, closed her eyes, and pressed her head against the pillow. She'd half turned away, but she feared that the cords on her leg would snap. Redheart sighed. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little stressed. I didn't mean to be rude, she said, turning back to Lyra. The unicorn opened her eyes and looked at the nurse, quite surprised because of her sudden mood change. I'm just having a tough night. Lyra smiled back, although the same thing could not be said about Redheart. Yeah, it's okay, nurse. She waved a hoof around. What do you say we start over again? Hello, I'm Lyra Heartstrings. She extended the hoof at Redheart. Redheart looked at Lyra's hoof and nodded softly. I'm Nurse Redheart. She dragged her hoof forward. Nice to meet you, I guess. She mumbled, shaking Lyra's hoof. What a pretty name. It fits your cutie mark. Well, I could say the same about you, Lyra. <laughs> Clever. Lara giggled. She rolled her eyes around and glanced at her files on the nightstand. Say, what's written in all those files? Seems like a lot of info. Well, it's pretty much your personal information and condition. Redheart explained. Also, blood samples are registered there, among many other things. It is quite, quite small compared to the patients in intensive care, for example. Ah, I see. Lara said, expecting something more exciting, not just boring data. Ah, that reminds me. 
Redheart ran through the files once again, withdrawing a single form from the documents. I need to ask you a few questions, now that you're, able, you're stable to talk. She sat on the floor and grabbed a pen with her hoof. Shoot away, I'll answer anything. Alright. Redheart pushed the pen button, ready to begin. First, I need to know if there's any record of heart attacks in your family. To see if this is genetic or not. Parents, uncles, grandparents, you know. Mm, not that I know of. Larva responded. She had tapped her chin with a hoof. My parents never had a heart attack, and I'm sure neither my Aunt Harpy. As Lyra spoke, the red heart took notes on the paper. All my grandparents were dead when I was born. Well, except for one, my grandma Larry still lives. But she never had a heart attack. She only has diabetes. Well, you've got to be careful with that. Diabetes is hereditary. If you don't take care, you'll end up being dependent on insulin shock. Red Heart stopped writing, turning the form around. I don't know. That's why I try to keep a balanced diet. Lara had met many ponies with diabetes before, and it didn't sound like a fun disease. She loved her candies, and she couldn't afford to lose them. Anyway, I need to ask you another question. Sure. Lara nodded. It says here that the doctors couldn't contact any relative or friend. They've got no inf info about you on that matter. Don't you have any relatives we can contact and inform them about the attack? Oh, about that. Lara bowed her head, her smile fading away. Mm, no, all my relatives are in Manhattan and can't a lot. I'm the only one in my family that lives in Ponyville. But still, I think we should call some pony and tell them you've had a heart attack. Parents or siblings or any pony. No, it's okay, really. There's no need to call any pony. Lara insisted. No, may we please change the subject? Redheart raised an eyebrow in confusion. Something about Lyra's sudden mood change was off, but she decided to please her patient's wishes. Alright, I'll talk with the doctor later. I just need to ask you about the attack and we're done, okay? Okay. Lara said, her smile returning to her face. About what happened? Redheart nodded. Well, I was at my house reading a book, and I'd been reading for about an hour, and I was about to finish as soon as I finished that chapter. Redheart's scribbling pen was the only response she got from her. After a while, I began to breathe heavily, and the room got hotter. I opened my room's window so I'd get a little fresh air. Did you eat something before reading? Redheart asked. Hmm. Yes, I had a daisy sandwich from the Penny Lane stand. They are literally the best daisy sandwiches you'll ever have in your life. Redheart nodded, indicating to her to proceed. Anyway, I kept reading for another five or seven minutes and after I opened the window, but it was so hot. I wanted to go to the kitchen and serve myself a glass of water, but that's when it happened. You had the heart attack when you stood up. Well, yes. My body felt heavy and my chest was burning. I really didn't know what was going on, but I knew it couldn't be, be a good thing. I lost consciousness in a matter of seconds. When I woke up, I was already being examined by doctors here in the hospital. Larma recalled the events of the night, events that would surely haunt her for a long time. It says here that the hospital received a call from a pony named Minuet. Who might that be? Ah, uh, Minuet. She's my neighbor. She must have seen me and called the ambulance. I think I collapsed in front of my bedroom window. Since we live really close to each other, she could see through my window and I can look through hers. I guess it was lucky she saw me. Indeed. The ambulance arrived just in time. A little, a little later and you might not have made it. But, how come she didn't come with the ambulance? Did she just call and nothing else? Well, we're indeed neighbors, but we're not really that close. We do favors for each other and greet every day, but we've never really been that close. I guess she just didn't see the need to accompany me. I see. Redheart pushed a pen inside. Well, I guess it's the last patient for my fill then. Last? How so? Lyra asked. Redheart stood up and placed a form on top of the files along with a pen. Well, I decided that I'd be quitting tomorrow. Lyra tilted her head. Quitting? How come? You seem to be a great nurse. Redheart sighed and turned back to Lyra. Well, it's just that I'm not happy with this job anymore. I've been working here for years and I just can't find in myself the motivation to keep going. She looked around the room, glancing at what she had seen for so many years. I'm a nurse. I've always been a nurse, but I think I'm tired of being one. Oh. Lara wasn't expecting to hear that. She had thought that Nurse Redheart was just doing her job and that she'd be see her again tomorrow, 
or the day after, or whatever day she'd be in the hospital. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but hey, get up only your heart. I know, I know. Getting a little tired, Red Heart dropped her eye. I just want something new to happen. I'm tired of the same old thing. Every day is just the same thing. I'm sick of it. What are you talking about? There's always something new tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow never knows. Lots and lots of new stuff will happen tomorrow. You just gotta be optimistic about it. If you treat every single day as the old one, you're never gonna find anything new. Red Heart blinked. She had not expected for Lyra to say something like that. No, it's always the same thing every day. Nothing new happens. Ever. Well, if you treat every single day like as the last one, of course nothing new will happen. You treat tomorrow as a new day, because that's what it is. Nurse Redheart wanted to protest, but Lyra was right. What was the point on treating every day like the one that j just passed? Yesterday shouldn't be like tomorrow. You know, I never looked at it that way. I guess you're right. Look at me. Even though I just had a heart attack, I'm so optimistic about tomorrow. I can't wait to see what it has prepared for me. Wow, you're quite the philosopher, Lyra. <laughs> Redheart giggled. Eh, I just read a bunch of books. Suddenly, Lyra realized something. Hey, that's the first time I see you smile. Red Heart's smile disappeared for a second, but came back as soon as he spoke. Yeah, I guess you have turned a boring old knight into something better. Eh, just look at the bright side. I just can't wait to get out of here and go eat some veggie sandwiches at Penny Lane. Lara could already picture it, munching on a toasted sandwich with crispy daisies. It just isn't fair if I keep the sandwiches from there to be known by other ponies. Are they really that good, huh? Red Heart wondered. Totally. In fact, why don't you go with me once I get out of here and we'll go have a couple sandwiches? I'm sure you'll love them as much as I do. Well, maybe not as much as me, but I'm sure you'll be pretty satisfied. Red Heart wasn't only touched by Lyra's optimism, but because of her kind offer. Sure, it sounds like fun to hang out. Oh, and if you want, you can get a friend to tag along with us if you like. Ah. Uh, Red Heart rolled her eyes. Sure. Uh, something the matter? Lara noticed a sudden mood change on Red Heart. That sure didn't sound like agreeing at all. If anything, it sounded like a forced response. It's nothing. It's just that, well... Red Heart rubbed a hoof against her leg and bit her lower lip. It's just that I don't really have any friends. That's all. Lara's jaw dropped as her head tilted. What? You don't have any friends? How is that possible? You work in a hospital. I'm sure you have lots of friends. Well, yes, I work here, but that doesn't mean I'm friends with every pony. I've known many doctors and nurses for years, but we're all acquaintances at most, nothing else. Sighing, Red Heart looked at Lyra. I think I never bothered to make any friends because I thought I didn't need them. I thought I was happy the way I was. Now look at me. I'm going to quit my job tomorrow, and I don't even know what I'm going to do next. But, Red Heart, making friends is something very important in every pony's life. We have, we all have to depend on other guys to coexist. You can't live a life all by yourself. I guess you're right. I never wanted to make any friends because I thought I didn't need them, but, well, you can't change the past. True, you can't, but you can not fix its mistakes. I extended a hoof to Red Heart. I will be officially your first friend. How does that sound? Red Heart was surprised at the sudden claim. Why would such a simple patient, whom she just met less than an hour ago, agree to be her friend? Sh sure She said, and shook Lyra's hoof. Lyra smiled. It'll be a shame that you won't be here tomorrow to take care of me, though. You'll get another nurse. And they're all much kinder and sweeter than me. I'm sure you'll be okay. Red Heart said. She had known many of the nurses for a long time, and they were indeed kind of loving, except for maybe Nurse Holdheart. But thanks, Lyra. Huh? For what? For cheering me up, even though we're total strangers. You told me to be optimistic and look at tomorrow as something new. Yeah, that's nothing really. I just like to make ponies happy, and I'm glad... She coughed. <coughs> I'm glad you're happy. Redheart nodded. Even if I'm not here tomorrow, I'll still come to visit you. And go get those sandwiches whenever you can go. Thanks, I appreciate it. You're a really nice pony, Nurse Redheart. Lara said. Redheart smiled. You're nice too, Lyra. Out of nowhere, the hospital radio began to play soft instrumental music. There were speakers scattered all across the hospital, one in each room. 
The background music was transformed to silence and cold hospital environment into something warmer and happier. Mm. Red Heart looked at Lyra. Huh? Is something wrong? I... I don't know. I... I... Uh... Lyra slowly began to breathe faster than usual, her pupils dilating. Lyra, are you okay? Worried, Red Heart approached Lyra. I... I... My... I guess... Lyra's legs began to shake as she gasped lightly. EKG on the side of the bed started beeping. No, uh, no, Lyra, hold on. As soon as Red Heart heard the bleeps, she stood up from her seat, pressed a button on it. Cold blue in room nine. I repeat, cold blue in room nine. She dashed back to Lyra and ripped her shirt apart with her mouth. The constant bleeps on the machine began to become louder and faster. Lyra, hang on. You'll be fine. Just resist. Lyra couldn't do anything. The burning pain she, she once felt back at her home was coming back, but stronger this time. She clenched her teeth, wishing for the pain to disappear. Red Heart held on to Lyra. The sounds of hooves and voices could be heard from outside the room, quickly approaching. In a few seconds, two doctors and a nurse burst into the room. The two doctors dashed towards the defibrillator, while the nurse went to aid Red Heart. Irregular pulse. The heart is beat as slower than usual. Nurse Coulthard, please prepare the patient for defibrillator. Lyra. Lyra, please move, Nurse Redheart. Pulse is decreasing. We need to do it now. Doctor, the patient's ready. Hang in there, Lyra. Please. Damn it, Nurse Redheart. Move. You're getting in the way. Hurry up. We don't have much time. Okay, Nurse Coldheart, please move. Everybody clear. Please, resist. Nothing happened. Repeat. Clear. Our heart isn't responding. We're losing her. Pulse decreasing. Clear. A flat beep noise told every pony what had happened. The doctor put down the defibrillator and bowed his head. Nurse Coldheart bit her lower lip while the other doctor looked at the wall clock. Time of death, 8th of December, 11.15pm. Red Heart stood there, staring at Lyra. Everything in the room went black, except for the unicorn she was talking just a few moments ago. Everything went silent, except for her cheerful voice. What had happened? Why was she feeling so sad? During all her years as a nurse, she had seen a fair share of patients who couldn't make it. Lara just just another unlucky soul, so why was she so sad? Usually, when a patient passes away in her turn, she just leaves the room and just goes back to her station. So why? Why was she still in the room? She had never felt so sad about any loss in her years as a nurse, so why was she crying? She had never had the need to stare at the patient whenever they pronounced her dead, so why was she staring at Lyra? As soon as the doctor announced the time of death, a song played on the hospital sound system. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Tomorrow I'll miss you Remember I'll always be true and then while I'm away, I'll write home every day, and I'll send all my loving to you. Dr. Robert? The doctor turned and looked at the yellow-coated mare in front of him. Ah, Miss Goldhut, do you have Lyra Hutching Siles? Yes, we checked them and they're all in order now, but there's one odd thing about this. Hmm? And what might that be? Well, we weren't able to contact any of her relatives. We can only contact her neighbor, which was the one who called the ambulance last night. She told us that Miss Harstrings has no relatives or friends. She she was a total no-pony. Well, that is weird. No relatives or friends. Hmm. I guess no one will be mourning her. By the way, Nurse Coldheart, have you seen Nurse Redheart? Yes. She is in room 9. She told me she wanted to be alone in the room for a while. I don't know why. She just went inside with the greasy paper bag and a plate. Well, I think we should let her be alone for a while. She seems to be quite affected by Miss Hudstring's passing away. It's almost noon, so perhaps we should go get some lunch. All right, Doctor. Hey, Lyra, I brought you a daisy sandwich from that Penny Lane place. Red Heart sat in front of an empty bed. Strong sunlight that filtered through the window illuminated the whole room. 
A toasted daisy sandwich rested on a plate on her bed, while Nurse Redheart took another one out of the paper bag. You know I promised you to go grab some after you got better. Redheart gave the sandwich a small bite. Well, Ira, you were right. This sandwich is amazing. She giggled and placed it down. <laughs> I'll be frequenting that place from, from now on. <laughs> Looking around the room, she sighed. You know, you were right. We never know what tomorrow has prepared for us, and every day is indeed a new day. I never truly understood why I was so exhausted in my job, but now I do. It was because I did nothing new to improve. I kept doing the same thing every single day. I kept thinking about tomorrow's another boring day, instead of thinking about it as another day to live and do something new. With no friends to care for, and treating every day as a cycle, of course I ended up hating my job. Thank you again, Lyra, for becoming my first true friend, even though I met you for a very short time. Thanks to you, I'll be able to fix the errors I committed in the past. I have decided to keep working here at the hospital, because one shouldn't run away from their problems, but fix them and become a better pony. Redheart stood up from her seat and put her sandwich in the paper bag. She turned around and trotted towards the door, stopping midway. Goodbye, Lyra. Thank you for making me a better pony and for being my first friend. She resumed her trotting and left the room, closing the door behind her. Thank you, Mr. Redheart. Redheart. Goodbye. 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 The end.